Okay, so in our last video, we got to the stage where we could detect when the player has collected all the stars and we print this level complete text. Um, but this isn't really useful to the player because they're not going to see the console. So um, we need a way to display it over here. And inside Figma, I've created this quick kind of level complete box that I want it to look like um, with the text level complete and space to continue, which will move to the next level. Um, so we're going to try and replicate this inside hacks. And we're going to be using something called uh, a substate. So as you can see, we have states here. And substate is kind of like um, the state that goes on top of the state. So it's like a, a substate, and it prevents the, the background state from doing anything. Um, you can, of course, have the background state persist. But in this case, we're not going to. We'll treat, we'll treat it like a modal on the web. So let's create a new file. Put level complete max. Let's put the boilerplate for that inside. And it's going to extend, extend, uh, FLX sub state. Like so, and because it's a class, it's, uh, it's going to have. Actually, I mentioned in the last video that we are not going to use the create methods for things that are not states. Um, but this is a state because it extends the state. So, this will have the create method. But the reason now we're going to use a constructor is purely because when you run the substate, um, it has this nifty thing where it, you can set the background color inside the constructor. So by default, it's transparent, but I want it to have a color. I want it to have kind of like a transparent black overlay so you know there's something over your game. Um, so let's do it now. We'll super in a color. Um, so I've done this before. So we've got 0x to say it's going to be a color. And we've got 61 to say it's 60% kind of visible, and then six zeros or six noughts, one, two, three, four, five, six, to say it's black. Okay, now we are going to override the create method. Uh, sorry, public. And we are going to have just this, let's start off by having just a blue box. Okay, so we're going to do super. Creates. This is something you should do automatically because you need to run the create function inside here. Um, sorry, create methods. And what we're going to do is create a new final variable called bounding box. Uh, this is going to be a sprite. And this is going to be a sprite that just creates a graphic. So previously you've seen me use an image for Sprite, but now I'm just going to create a box in my graphic. Um, and I've already worked out in Figma the kind of width, height, and position. Um, we're going to let the game calculate this. So we're just going to do these two values and the color. So width is going to be 460, height is going to be 27, and the color is going to be this, so full, which is 100% FF, and we're going to use that to 428 BBF. 428 BBF. There we go. And now what we're going to do is we're going to center it to the screen. So screen center, and we'll center it both by the X and Y axis. And add that into the state. Okay. So now to see that running in the game, what we're going to do is inside the update method here. Um, this will still run once the game is complete, but I just want to see it running. So I'm going to create a new variable inside here. It won't stay here forever, it should be temporary. Uh, we'll call it level complete. I'm going to run this new level complete class that we created. Yep, complete, like so. And we are going to run this method called open substate. And we're going to call this variable. So the way substates work is you have to um, you have to create a variable for them each and every time um, you need one because they're only created when you need them. So you can open and close substates kind of like a, a pause menu. So once you once you open the pause menu, it creates one. 
opens that substate, and once you close it, it will remove it. So you have to create it each time you open and close it. It's good for memory, to some extent. And that's why this variable isn't set up here at open and close down here. Okay, so now we have that. Going to again. Hard refresh. And you should see. Um, you, should, you should see a blue box, but you don't see anything. Okay, and as you can see, we have this blue box here exactly as we designed in the Figma. So let's go ahead and add the text. Um, the issue I had previously, which was causing the yeah me to stumble a lot, was the fact that this was being imported up here, and I didn't need it. I think this was an accident of um, IntelliSense. So I got rid of it, and everything worked. But anyway, let's go ahead and add this um, this level complete text with three exclamation marks and press space to continue text. Um, so that's actually quite simple. We've done so before. Um, we're going to create two final variables. One called the complete text. That'll obviously be a FLX text. Um, and what we're going to do is we'll leave this zero for now, and we'll put the text here. Level complete. Three exclamation marks. And then we're going to go into Figma and try and figure out the dimensions we want, or position we want. So x is 463. Um, we're actually going to center this with the screen. So we're going to here do a um, level complete text dot screen. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I should I should entire sense. But anyway, screen center x. So we just want it on the x-axis, and then we'll add that. Um, but what we want to do for the y-axis is have it based off of where this position is. So, if I zoom in to here and hold on to the option key, you'll see level completes 45 pixels lower than where the blue box is. So we're going to grab this, get that y, and make it plus 45. And the x will be zero because this will take care of that. Um, font size, I think. Uh, actually, I need to get the width. Leave that at zero because it automatically figures it out. Um, then font size, I think it's thirty-six. Yeah, thirty-six. So we'll put that here, and that should that should be the end of that. Hopefully. Um, yeah, let's see if that works. Refresh, and we should have level complete, perfect. Let's do the same for the text below. Create another final variable. This time we are going to call it uh, sub complete text. That will also be the FLX text. And for, like we did before, have it all zeros before. Have our text, so press space to continue. Um, and then go to Figma. Of course, let's figure out how much. So this is 135 below this. So we can again grab this, make it 135. Um, and then it's getting a bit hard to see. So. Um, Uh, I think the font size here is 18. So I'll bring it down. Then we're going to do the same thing we've done for this one. Center on the x axis. And add it as well. Once we save, fingers crossed. Is that done? That's done now. Hopefully. Perfect. Um, what's there next to do? Okay, so next and final step is to grab all of this, get it out of there, and put it inside here. 
Okay, so now when we actually complete the level, um, as in the collect all the stars, it should open our substate. Let's test it. Actually, let's not test it like that. Let's test it like this. So we're going to say once the player collects two stars, then it kicks off. Okay. Once that's done, we rush. Just so you guys don't have to see me playing the game horribly. So we collect one star, and we collect the second star. Bang, level complete. There we go. So in our next video, we are going to link another level, so level two, to this when the player presses the spacebar. Um, so, so some homework. If you're able to create another level inside Tiled with some stars and some platforms, go ahead and do that. One thing to also mention is you will notice here that the font is a bit low resolution, and that unfortunately is the way Figma works. Um, to improve this, you could have a high resolution game. So currently, our game is 720, but we could ramp it up to 1080, or we could use a bitmap text to to make it more crisp. Um, but yeah. That's it, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.